say that is the population. Uh, we're going to say that's the population parameter. So it, it can be very confusing. A lot of my students read articles all the time that, that claim to know what's going on with millions of people. They claim, oh, the population mean average salary is $45,000 per year. They don't realize that that number was not actually the population parameter like it said in the article. It was actually came from a sample. So they took a random sample and then they, they calculated the sample mean and then they just told us that is the sample, that is the population mean. Now really, people in statistics knows, know sort of how this works, that a lot of times in an article when somebody claims to know the population, they really got that, that number from the sample. But a lot of people that don't know statistics kind of read it and think people just know what's going on with millions of people all the time. So be real kind of mindful that when somebody says they know something about, they know this number about everybody in the world, they know what's going on with millions and millions of people, eh, they might be off on that. Because remember, samples are not the same as populations, right? Sampling variability. Random samples are not going to be the same exactly as population. So if you're using a random sample and then telling people it is the population parameter, that creates a lot of confusion. It's better to say um, the random sample mean was 45,000 and we think this could be close to the population. That's fine. But then a lot of times in the articles they don't say that. They'll just, they'll just say the population is this number. So it creates a lot of confusion, especially for my students. They, they kind of have a hard time grasping that. So be wary of this. A lot of times when people tend to say things about the entire population, it may not be that they really got that number from a sample. Um, okay. So <laughs> we're in trouble here, right? I mean, I know ahead of time that the population parameter was 0.5. But if all I knew was these, like one of these random sample means, like maybe I knew all the sample mean I got was 0.3, you know, I mean, if I was doing a point estimate, I'd tell people that the, the sample, the, the chances of someone getting tails is 0.3, because that's what my random sample proportion came out to be. But that's not really the case, right? So... How can we, from sample data, figure out the population if we didn't know this? Well, the one thing we look at is this graph. This graph is actually very famous. Think about it this way. I know that one random sample, each, most of these random samples are pretty far off from 0.5, right? Like this 0.3 is, you know, 2, uh, 0.2 below the population, and 0.8 is 0.3 above the population. So a lot of my random samples here are off from the population. But look at this graph all together. What's the shape of this graph? Right? Do you see the shape? What's the shape look like? If you said normal or bell-shaped, yeah, I'm very proud of you. Right? This is normal. And we learned in the last unit that what was the center and spread we like to use for normal data? All right, well, if you said the mean for your center uh -huh, and the standard deviation for your spread, very good. So if you, if you said that, I'm very proud of you. That's something that's really important. So if this is normal, then the center of this graph should, could be represented by the mean, right? The mean of the sampling distribution. Okay, so in other words, the mean average of all these p-hats. Well, where's the center in the graph? Where do you think it falls? About right here, where the, most of the dots seem to lie, I guess this would be about the center, right? That's where sort of the mean of the sampling distribution would fall. So think of it as the mean average of all the p-hats. If I took all the p-hats and found the mean average, it'd be about, about there. Is that pretty close to the population parameter? Yeah, see how the center of the graph is actually pretty close to the population parameter. So, is the, sampling, is the center of the sampling distribution close to the population parameter of 0.5? Yes, it is. Right? So, what you're seeing here is while one random sample can be very off from the population, if I was able to take many, many, many random samples, 
create a graph like this and then go for the center of this of this distribution the center of the distribution is actually pretty close to the population parameter so that's a really good that's a really important thing so think of the center of the sampling distribution as pretty close to the population parameter okay so we said that in analyzing data we want the the shape the center and the spread right the spread well, remember the spread for normal data was the standard deviation. So it makes sense if I'm going to measure the spread of the sampling distribution, I want to use the standard deviation. We have a special name for that. It's called the standard error. Not standard deviation, standard error. Standard error refers to the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So it's not the standard deviation for one data set, it's the standard deviation that corresponds to statistics and thousands of them, thousands of data sets. Good way to think of it as standard error is referring to thousands of data sets, or in our case just 60 data sets. Uh, standard deviation, when people say standard deviation, a lot of times that's referring to one data set. So let's see if we can estimate, well how far, it, what's the standard deviation in this problem? Now, I'm not going to calculate this by hand. I'm just going to kind of estimate. If you guys remember, uh, one standard deviation from the mean in normal data is usually about the middle 68%, right? So if I kind of go from the middle out, I probably think that my standard deviation is somewhere in that area. So probably about my standard error is probably about 0.1 just kind of estimating from the graph. That looks about typical values are about between 0.4 and 0.6 so standard deviation is probably about 0.1 somewhere in that area. Okay, but now this is really the key. What is the meaning of standard error? A lot of people know that the standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution but they don't get the idea of what this is really measuring. Remember standard deviation measures how far typical numbers in a data set are from the mean, right? How far are typical numbers from the mean? But in a sampling distribution, if we kind of apply that logic, each one of these is not a number. Each one of these is a sample statistic. So the standard error is telling me how far the sample statistics are, typical sample statistics, could be from the center or the mean of the sampling distribution. But what did we say? The mean of the sampling distribution is the population parameter, or at least an estimate of it. Hmm, okay, so think of standard error as how far typical statistics are from the population parameter. And that's exactly what we want to know, because we want to try to figure out how far statistics are off from the population, right? When I, when I take a random sample, how far off is that from the population? Now, keep in mind one key thing here. It says how far what? Typical statistics are from the population parameter. Compare that to the margin of error definition. How far off could any sample statistic could be from the population parameter, right? So this isn't just measuring typical. So think of standard deviation as measuring just typical. If it was, um, if it was, um, uh, if you're talking about um, the empirical rule, typical in a normal data refers to about the middle 68%. So standard error is only really measuring the middle 68% of the statistics. It's only finding how far typical statistics. There's a lot of statistics here that were beyond one standard deviation. Now let's go back to think about our, our study of normal data, right? We said that normal data usually outliers are more than two standard deviations away. So we probably don't want to use outliers in our margin of error calculation. We probably just want to refer to anything that's not an outlier. Well, if you look at the middle, if you guys remember empirical rule, the middle 95% was about two standard deviations away, right? Two standard deviations was the middle 95%, and those are the values that are not outliers. So early statisticians that studied this stuff kind of come up with a general formula for figuring out margin of error. They said that margin of error 
should be about twice as big as the standard error. So if, if this was normal, remember, uh, then the, and, you know, the empirical rule applies to it, if this was normal, then we said two standard deviations was sort of the cutoff for something being unusual. So within two standard deviations should cover most of the statistics that are not considered outliers. So margin of error is usually two times the standard error. Now we'll see later that they, they kind of improved on this number two, but it's always good to have in your mind, at least for proportions here, that uh, two times the standard error is the margin of error. In other words, margin of error um, takes into account any statistic that's not an outlier, while standard error takes into account only typical statistics, right? Only that middle one standard deviation, the one middle 68%, okay? So think margin of error is bigger than standard error. But if I, if I can figure out standard error, then maybe I can figure out margin of error. And that's going to tell me how far off my random sample is from the population. So let's look, let's, let's review real quick a couple of the main takeaways from this sampling distribution. One, the center of the sampling distribution is pretty close to the population. One random sample doesn't tell me a whole lot. I'm, I got a big margin of error. But if I was able to make a lot of random samples, make a graph like this and go for the center, the center will be pretty close to the population. So this was close, center was close to the population. Okay, we also saw that the, the standard deviation of this graph is called standard error, and that tells me how far off typical statistics are from the population parameter. If I multiply the standard error by 2, I get an approximate margin of error, telling me how far off I think my sample statistics could be from population parameters. So this is really taking a huge step in the development of how do we figure out populations. Okay, so some really key definitions on this, on this lecture. Uh, don't forget sampling distribution, sampling variability, margin of error, and standard error. All very key definitions that I'll be referring to constantly throughout the rest of the class. So you want to make sure you got those definitions down. Okay, so I hope this was helpful for you. We'll do another.